Okay, welcome back to another word study, repent slash repentance. We're going to be in the books of Hosea, Joel, and Amos. So we're going to start in Hosea chapter 11, verse, eight, uh, verse 7. And my people are bent to backsliding from me, though they called them to the Most High, none at all would exalt him. How shall I give thee up, Ephraim? How shall I deliver thee, Israel? How shall I make thee as Adma, how shall I set thee as Zeboam? My heart is turned within me, my repentings are kindled together. I will not execute the fierceness of mine anger, I will not return to destroy Ephraim, for I am God, and not man, the Holy One in the midst of thee, and I will not enter into the city. They shall walk after the Lord, he shall roar like a lion. Get a hold of that one. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. Remember, Jesus came as a lowly, lowly and meek, a lamb. He's coming back as a lion. But going back to verse 8, where it says, My repenting are kindled together. Kindled, I went ahead and looked that up. Set on fire and flame. But here's the thing, excited into action. My repentings, plural, are kindled together. God, throughout the whole Old Testament, as we've learned, most of the words repent that we've come across have to do with God punishing Israel and changing how he's punishing Israel. He starts it, and then he stops it. He, he said he's going to destroy Israel. He's going to go through this punishment. Israel repents, and God repents, changes how he's going to deal with them. So all those repentings that he's done is kindled. And it's talking about, this is prophecy, but it's talking about his dealings, how he's going to deal with Israel. As we read up there, what is it? And my people are bent to backsliding from me. They just keep backsliding. You keep reading about it, backsliding, backsliding. So Jesus came, God manifests in the flesh to be their king. And they denied him as king. Uh, they crucified him. Uh, Jesus will be coming back at the end of times of Jacob's trouble to set up the millennial kingdom. And he's sealing 144,000 Jews in the forehead. And he's going back to dealing with Israel to fulfill prophecy. Okay. So we see there the context, and that's the whole point of these studies. Context. We're here to prove that repent or repentance, the actual action, is not an action like works. It's something that happens in the heart. It's not works to have repentance as part of salvation. We get told, brothers and sisters, that lie so much, and the lost world gets told that lie so much by a lot of professing Christians and false religions. Okay. Uh, verse 9, I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. I will not return to destroy Ephraim. That is right there is what the repenting is that God's doing. Hosea 13, 14. We're going to go to Hosea 13, verse 14, and we're going to read uh, 9 through 16. So let's go to verse 9 and Hosea 13. O Israel, thou hast destroyed thyself, but in me is thine help. Absolutely. I will be thy king, whereas any other that may save thee in all cities. Where is any other that may save thee in all cities? Question. And thy judges of whom thou sayest, give me a king and prince. Here's the key, not for what we're doing, but a key for what I'm about to mention. I gave thee a king in mine anger and took him away in my wrath. Uh, Saul, remember the story of Saul. Uh, the people wanted a king. God's like, I am your king. But they rejected God as being their king. What happened when Jesus came here? Uh, they rejected their king. When Saul was, when you read the story about Saul, they wanted man to be king. Mankind, they wanted a man, flesh and blood, to be king. So then, when Jesus comes, God gives him a man. Jesus came in the flesh. He had to eat, he had to drink, he had to sleep. Okay. He was, like I said, he came as a lamb. 
what did they do? They rejected him as king and said, we have no king but Caesar. So I thought that was very important. This is prophesying. 12. The iniquity of Ephraim is bound up, his sin is hid. The sorrow of a travailing woman shall come upon him. He is an unwise son, for he should not stay long. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's my dog barking. Should not stay long in the place of the breaking forth of children. I will ransom them from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. O death, I will be thy plagues. O grace, I will be thy grave. I'm sorry. O grave, I will be thy destruction. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. We're going to go over this because this is a great example, or a great teaching on what Jesus did. Verse 15. Thou shalt... Though he be fruitful among his brethren, an east wind shall come, the wind of the Lord shall come up from the wilderness, and his spring shall become dry, and his fountain shall be dried up, he shall spoil the treasure of all pleasant vessels. Samaria shall become desolate, for she hath rebelled against her God. They shall fall by the sword, their infants shall be dashed in pieces, and their women with children shall be ripped up. Very, very straightforward. No sugar coating, no uh, trying to take it down a notch, like trying to sh make it seem pleasant or nice. But we read there, Hosea 13, 14, I will ransom them from the power of the grave. Rescue, deliver is what ransom means. Uh, remember this, because we're going to get to a very important verse in the New Testament. I will redeem them from death. I looked up the word redeem. To rescue, to recover, to deliver from. O death, I will be thy plagues, O grave. Okay. I will be thy destruction. Plague, to vex, destruction, eternal death, ruin. Jesus overcame death. Okay. 1 Corinthians 15, 55. 1 Corinthians 15, 55. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. The whole thing about here when it talks about uh, the next last part of uh, Hosea 13, 14. Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. When God saves a sinner, or He saved Israel, He doesn't regret it. Okay? There's some things as we read that when God says this is going to happen, it's going to happen. So two parts I looked at this and said, you know what? God does not regret a decision He makes. When He repents, changes how He's dealing with things, He doesn't regret it. When He saves you, when Jesus Christ saves you, he doesn't regret it. Oh man, you know what? I shouldn't have saved him. Look at him. He's fallen into sin. I shouldn't have saved him. God won't do that. God says, hey, this is going to happen in the future. This is what I'm doing to you now. He will not repent. Mainly what he's talking about in the future. These are future, future prophecies and he's not going to repent. Repentance is going to be what does it say right there? Uh, Repentance shall be hid from mine eyes. Okay. Remember how God deals with us. This is the first time we see repentance, and it has to do with change of mind. Okay, sorrow for anything done. God's not sorry for saving somebody. Okay. And He's not going to change His mind when it comes to these prophecies. They will be fulfilled. Some have already been fulfilled. Some have yet to be fulfilled. So that's the book of Hosea. Let's go to the book of Joel, next book. Two times repent is used in this book. I also found it interesting in Hosea, we found the first time that repentance with the A-N-C-E is used in the whole Old Testament. I ferment there, like I said, we learn things. I was thinking there for a while, I thought maybe repentance was just a New Testament word, 
Whereas repent, repenteth, repented, repenting, that's all Old Testament as far as we don't see repentance, the actual word repentance. But we did. Joel 2, 12. Therefore also now saith the Lord, Turn ye ever, even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your heart, and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious, and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Okay? Talking about repentance of him evils, talking about how God deals with people. He changes his providence. Okay, I'm punishing him. I'm not going to punish him as much as I want as I said I would. I was going to punish him, and they repented, so I didn't punish him at all. Okay? It's showing how he is merciful, gracious, for he's gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of evil. He's talking about them that they need to turn, turn ye even to me with all your heart. Uh, repentance happens in the heart. Notice it says over here, 13, and rend your heart and not your garments. It's not an outward showing. It's supposed to be inside the heart. That's what repentance is when it applies to us. Okay, this is talking about how God deals with things. But I found it interesting when you saw, for he is gracious and merciful. And God put it in my heart for me to go over uh, 2 Samuel 12, 21. Because a lot of times you come across people in the New Testament when we preach the true gospel of repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, they always grab spots where they say there is no repenting here. There is no repenting there. They, what they mean is, is the word repentance is not there. The act of repenting in the heart, repentance, the state of the person is there, but they'll ignore that. So let's go back to 2 Samuel 12, 21. God put this on my heart, and I read it, and I was like, this is King David saying whether God would repent or not, yet he's not using the word repent. Okay, to get in context, because I didn't want to go through it all and probably should read it all. Okay, King David murdered a man and committed adultery. And the, the uh, actions, the consequences of committing that adultery is Bathsheba got pregnant. Okay. So uh, God sends a prophet to tell King David all his punishments and basically bring to light his sin that he thought he did in darkness, but God brought it to light. He did it privately, is what I mean by darkness. He did it privately, thinking nobody knew. Okay. God knows. There's a lot of people today that do the same thing. God knows. It doesn't matter if nobody else sees you. If you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, God sees you. And eventually, he's going to bring it to light. But we're here where the child's dead. King David's on the ground, sackcloth, ashes. He's fasting. And he overhears the servant say his child is dead. So this is what he does after that. He gets up, I'm sorry, he gets up, he eats, he cleans himself off after the child's dead. Second Samuel 12, 21. Then said his servants unto him, What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive, but when the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. And he said, this King David, while the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead, wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. Notice what he just said there. See, who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that he that the child may live. God told him the child's going to die. Bugs. God told him the child's going to die. But what is King David saying? He's basically saying, who knows whether God will repent of that punishment that I'm supposed to bear. Who knows if God will repent? So the word repent doesn't always have to be used specifically that word. 
Okay, the action of repentance can be there. Uh, the hope of repentance can be there. Amos 7, so that is the book of Joel. Um, when you look in there, hopefully I didn't, I think I might have skipped one on accident. 14, who knoweth if he will return and repent? That's talking about us. Who knoweth he will return and repent? Not us as far as um, me and church age. I'm talking about, it's man, it's talking about man. Uh, repenting, having sorrow in their heart for sinning against God. Okay, so the two times it was used. One, the first time, as God, how God deals with people. Whether he changes how he's going to deal with somebody. Punishment, prophecy. Uh, who knoweth if he will return and repent, talking about man, and leave a blessing behind him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Now, Amos, book of Amos, the last book we're going to do. The Amos chapter 7, verse 1. Sorry, got to do that. Amos chapter 7, verse 1. Thus hath the Lord God showed unto me, and behold, he formed grasshoppers in the beginning of the shooting up of the latter growth, and lo, it was the latter growth after the king's mowing. And it came to pass that when they had made an end of eating the grass of the land, then I said, O Lord God, forgive me, I beseech thee, by whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small. Arise. Remember the promise. Okay? Israel will be as the sands of the sea. Will be more numeral than this, numberable, like the numbers will be more than the stars in heaven. Okay, that hasn't happened. That's why he's saying, "Whom shall Jacob arise? For he is small." The Lord repented for this; it shall not be, saith the Lord. God will keep His promise. The millennial kingdom, the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ, the Jewish people, Israel, will become like that though the numbers will be outstanding out out outrageous if you want to say it that way the promise is going to be fulfilled Jesus will be ruling and reigning in peace for a thousand years okay how God God's saying that's not going to happen he's going to keep his promise he's not changing that providence what he's going to do verse 4 thus hath the Lord God showed unto me and behold the Lord God called to contend by fire and it devoured the great deep and did eat up a part then said I O Lord God cease I beseech thee by whom shall Jacob arise for he is small once again God's dealing out judgment but remember Jacob the promise we are small the Lord repented for this this also shall not be saith the Lord God he's not going to wipe out the Jewish people in the time of Jacob's trouble. He never wiped out the Jewish people throughout the Old Testament. When they rejected Jesus Christ and they crucified him on the cross, God didn't wipe out Israel. Okay? He's not going to repent of his promise. He's not done with Israel. I looked up contend when it said contend by fire, to strive in opposition to punish. So he's punishing with fire. But as we see in both of these spots, it has to do with God saying, this shall not be. He's not going to repent of his promise that he made. Israel, Jacob is another word for Israel. Thou, thy name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, as we read in the Old Testament. So, as we see once again that repent, repentance has nothing to do with works. It's something that happens in the heart. When God repents, it's not a sin, he's not being a sinner. And it's hard, he's saying, it is enough. They repented, so I'll repent and I won't punish them. I've made prophecies of the future that I'm not going to change. That's what it means when God repents. He's not going to change anything. Or he will change something. So, sorry about that. So, as we see, people are going to keep attacking you and saying brothers and sisters in Christ, who stand for the true gospel, repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confessing both in prayer and calling upon the name of the Lord to save you. People are going to attack you and attack you and say repentance is works. We've gone through most of the Old Testament. We have Jonah and another book that has the word repent or repentance 
in it, and so far we've yet to see repent, repentance being a physical act. It's something that happens in the heart. So grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you, brothers and sisters in Christ. Thank you for sticking with me for this far. I just wanted to go through every book hardcore so there's no question that repent or repentance is not a physical act. It's something that happens in the heart. The physical act can, is evidence of repentance. The actual repentance happens in the heart. The changed life comes after salvation and it's evidence that you repented. And then your belief because you repented happened in the heart. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 talks about how you can believe in vain. You skip repentance and you just believe it's in the head. Your belief is in vain and you're going to hell. Okay? You don't want to believe in vain. You cannot skip repentance. You can't. And the changed life isn't works-based salvation. In other words, the changed life isn't you earning salvation. The changed life is evidence that you repented. And as we've gone through plenty of books, we showed that people would repent and then clean up their life. Sometimes people would clean up everything and then repent. Okay? Today, you need to repent first. You always need to hit your knees and repent. Then turn. Okay? One of my favorite verses in the whole Bible is Jesus Christ. He's talking. He says, deny yourself, pick up your cross daily, and follow me. Repent, forsake, and move on. Whatever that was that caused you to drop your cross, because it says daily, when you pick up your cross, you're forsaking what caused you to drop your cross. You're turning from it. You're doing a 180, and that's after repent, denying yourself, your self-righteousness, your pride. Yes, Lord, I screwed up. Please forgive me. True sorrow for God. Okay. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, because it talks about our day-to-day -day walk with the Lord. It's a great verse explaining our day-to-day -day walk with the Lord. You're going to fall into sin and temptation, but you need to repent. And repent happens in the heart. Evidence of repenting is picking up your cross. Saying I'm sorry, but leaving your cross on the ground is not repent. You didn't really repent. Okay, there's two types of repentance. Worldly sorrow, godly sorrow. Okay, two types of things that, that you'll repent. you repent because you got caught and all the punishment and all the pain you're going through. Or you're going to repent of what you did and say I deserve what, what God's doing to me. I deserve this suffering. I deserve to go to hell. So I kind of went on a little bit more than I wanted to. So thank you for watching. I'll see you in the book of Jonah. That's the next book. And uh, please stand, stand, stand for repentance as part of salvation because it is part of salvation. See you in the next video.